What's up guys, LH of Low Tech. Can you increase your print sizes using parts you printed yourself? This video goes over Genovas uh, Z-axis expansion that is available on Thingiverse. There are instructions available on the website there if you wanna go ahead and try to follow those instead. Um, but they were a little unclear to me, so I decided to go ahead and make a video to better explain the whole process and show some ways that I found to make this process a little bit easier. The first thing you wanna do is actually print the parts that are available on Thingiverse. There's two versions of this modification, a 25 millimeter and a 35 millimeter. This video is gonna cover the 35 millimeter because why not? But the other thing you have to decide is how thick of a bed you are using, if you are using a glass bed or something like that. There are four different options for how high your bed is between zero and four millimeters, I believe, or three millimeters. So you just gotta pick how thick of a layer you guys have or a printing surface you guys have on your bed. In this case, I went with a one millimeter because I'm using the build tack stuff. Um, but if you do have something thicker, you can go ahead and put the, the three millimeters or something like that. The very next thing you wanna do is actually move the Z axis all the way to the top because it will make things easier as we go forward in this build. The next step is disassembling the printer and you take all the screws off of the sides and of the bottom so we can take a good look at what's inside of the printer. Once we have all of the screws undone, we'll have a good look at all of the cables. So at this point, you'll have to decide whether or not you want to unwire your printer, uh, taking all the wires off the board in order to make things a little bit easier for you. It does make things easier if you can unwire everything, uh, but for in my case, in order to make it a little easier on me to remember where each of the wires went, I actually left everything wired together and I, made some adjustments to the process at the end in order to fit all the wires through. So if you were to go ahead and follow my direction, the only thing you really need to do is cut some cable ties uh, right here and here. The next step is to remove the tower from the base. There's four screws that we need to remove. And once we remove those four, everything should be able to slide free once you disconnect the plug from the motor. After that, we'll need to move six screws from the top and six screws from the bottom in order to remove the sides of the tower so we can gain access to the insides. Once we have everything open, the next step is going to be removing this bar here. We remove these two screws and then we can twist the base in order to pull out the bar. Next, we'll install the 35 millimeter standoffs into the four corners of the tower. Following that will be the two 10 millimeter standoffs in the middle surrounding the, the motor where we actually unscrewed the motor just a minute ago. Next, we'll want to remove the Z limit switch from the side of the case. And you can do this by removing the two screws from the outside of the tower near the filament holder. Next, we're going to pop in the new place for the Z limit switch. And this is gonna go on the 10 millimeter standoffs on the underside with the tall end of the part being oriented towards the front of the tower. Here we can remount the Z-switch using the original bolts. We can now attach bolts to the top of the standoffs in order to ensure that they don't come out later. Next we'll pop the motor spacer on the same 10 millimeter standoffs on the underside, giving the motor a little bit of rigidity once we reinstall it. Now is a good time to reinstall the front of the tower before moving on. At this point, we'll run the wires of the board that are going into the tower through the new base. If you unplugged everything earlier, this is really easy for you, just wiring everything through the opening. If you're like me, you can do this one by one by just unplugging each item individually, running it through the base, and then plugging it back into the board. Either way, after you fed through all the different wires, this is what you should see at the bottom once you attach the new base to the 35 millimeter standoffs. We can then re-screw the tower back into the base and then assemble the printer. The rear of the printer should look like this once complete. One thing you want to do before printing is reduce the height of the bed. The new Z-switch location is much lower than the original one, meaning that if you don't reduce the height of the bed, the hot end is going to dig very deeply into the bed. So as you can see here on the left, that is what the new location is. Um, with the plus one Z switch spacer. And then on the right is what it was before using the stock monopriced Z switch location. Just how much taller can you print with this new modification? Well, it kind of depends on what the actual 
piece you printed out for in terms of how thick your bed height is going to be, whether you get glass or something like that. But in my case, with a one millimeter standoff, you're actually looking to print about 45 extra millimeters out of the printer. So going from 120 all the way up to 165. You actually can post a little bit over 165, but since the printer does need to go a few millimeters up when it stops printing in order to clear off, uh, 165 is what I found to be the print the maximum I can do. 166 maybe, but 165 is what you should be able to do. Now, in terms of height by itself, that is a pretty substantial increase. That's, you know, 33% more roughly than what you can print normally. Um, and looking at a print that was designed to be printed at 150, 160, whatever, it looks fine. Like, it, like oh, wow, I can print a little higher and me not notice. But for prints that needed to be scaled downwards in order to make them fit, such as this piece right here. Uh, this is actually normally a 200 millimeter tall base, uh, and it had to be scaled down to fit 120 millimeters previously. So this was printed a while ago in order to get it under the 120 millimeter mark in order to test space mode. And then with the new modification, this is what comes out. And you can kind of see how much bigger it is. Uh, and so, Yes, there is a height difference. This is actually about 167. You can kind of see where it stopped printing at the very top when I was looking to see how far I could actually print. But this one, you have to think about it. If you're scaling an object down and you had to scale it all the way down to 120, I mean, you're scaling it in height, but you're also scaling it in width. So even though that this is only, you know, 120 millimeters and this is 167, so, you know, an extra 40 millimeters or so, the the whole size is actually significantly bigger because we have to scale it on the X and Y axis as well. So if you are printing objects and you had to scale them down to fit 120 millimeters before, you're gonna get a massive increase in how big they actually could make them. If you had to print something that normally you just couldn't print because you couldn't scale it down, like it wouldn't work on a part, then it will enable you to print those. Um, so that, that is the benefit, but really, in terms of printing tall things that you get to scale, that's where we're really going to see the biggest benefit with this modification. So all that comes down to, should I do this? What are the drawbacks to it? Well, some of the drawbacks are obviously you are now missing the rear piece of your case. Um, it From the back, it won't look that nice. Um, and there, will, there is a little bit of loss rigidity um, in that change. Not too much. I said I printed a couple things so far and haven't noticed any difference, but it is something to be noticeable. I, I may in the future actually print a vanity piece just to kind of cover that area up or maybe even get a little bit more of structural support from them. But for the most part, you know, it, you are going to lose just a tiny bit of rigidity there, um, although it may not be noticed. The other thing is going to be obviously making modifications to your printer. You lose warranty. But if you're doing this kind of thing anyway or considering doing anything like that, you're probably not considering keeping your warranty uh, valid anyways. Other than that, just do it. It really opens up your ability to print larger items, um, especially since many items today are limited by height and not by your width. 120 millimeters wide is definitely enough for most things, um, and it's usually going to be based off of the, the Z-axis where you're actually going to be limited. All it takes is a couple hours and a screwdriver, and you could definitely increase the size of your print dramatically, so why wouldn't you? Thanks for watching guys, LOH of Low Tech. We hope you enjoyed this video. It is a little bit different than what we normally cover on this channel, but if you did, please let us know in the comments. And if you have any suggestions for future mods or videos that we should be making, let us know. Subscribe.